Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to Planescape Torment. All right, we're back here at the uh, Advocate's uh, house because uh, I think we need to get I'm something gone. else from the Advocate. Uh, I was trying to figure out what we needed to do to uh, um, continue the Ravel quest. Uh... Ah, there we go. Actually, I believe you have a legacy for me. Indeed, very well. Do you remember the legacy in question? Uh, the legacy is number 51AA, I believe. He looks at you in surprise as you name the legacy. That is extremely old, are you certain? A shocked look comes upon his face. I hope that wasn't one of the ones that was burned. How old is it? Well... Several decades, at least. That's not that old. You said it might have been burned? What do you mean? I think that was, uh... I think we already heard that. Can you check to see if the legacy still exists? Oh, yes, of course. It will take a moment. Oh, very well. I will wait. Giannis returns, nodding. Yes, fortunately, it was unharmed by the fire. All the articles are safe. Could I collect on it? I am the beneficiary. 8,000 experience points. Of course, sign here and here on the dotted line. There and there. All right. What am I signing? Am I just marking an X? There we are. That should be the last of the paperwork. Here are all the items that were in the vault. One looks like a foundry receipt, though quite an old one to be sure. Did the deceased have something commissioned at the foundry? I don't really know. Perhaps... I'm beginning to think just about anything is possible. Where is the foundry? Updated my journal. I don't really know. Perhaps... Oh, uh, that's that was me. Uh, it is located in the lower ward. It is past the great gate. Look for a number of godsmen, guard, uh, godsmen guards at the gate, and you should be in the right place. Very well, perhaps there's something else that you can help me with. I gained 731 copper pieces as well. Oh, can you tell me about the fire? There's nothing much to say uh, about the matter. It was a strange, localized fire. I cannot imagine what would have been precious in the documents that were burned, but someone must have wanted them destroyed. I may have been responsible for the fire. You? What do you mean? Truth. I may have done it at some point in the past, when I was not in my right mind. I regret my actions and ask your forgiveness. But... Giannis looks almost at a loss for words. But why? Some of the things that were burned, they were precious only to me, irreplaceable. It is likely that one of those mementos or documents was threatening to this other self of mine. I do not believe I will ever know. Your other self? What, what are you speaking of? I have a peculiar condition. I lose myself on occasion and become someone else for a time. During that time, my actions are not my own. Yannis frowns. He seems to be thinking the matter over. I have heard of sub such symptoms of the mind. Temporary amnesia and the emergence of other personality... of another personality. And there is the fact that you have chosen to claim responsibility for the crime. That is similar to, the, to my condition. I came to ask you forgiveness for the crime. I came to ask your forgiveness and make amends for your loss if it is within my power. Updated my journal. 4,000 experience points. I... Giannis frowns and his expression relaxes. There is nothing to forgive. I have come to terms with the loss and no lasting harm has been done. I do not know why the target was chosen, however. There was nothing of value among the documents burned. What were the documents? Legacies, mostly. Some very old ones. Legacies? They were... Okay, uh... All right, In that's knowing all. the teachings of Zerthamon, I have become stronger. Excellent. 
Okay, I picked up a kaleidoscope gem. A receipt. Let's go ahead and give you this stuff for now. You can hold on to that. Strange chunk of rock. I want that back, of course. Okay, so the Godsman receipt has been uh, identified. A receipt stamped with the symbol of the Godsman. Probably redeemable at the Godsman Foundry. Kaleidoscopic Eye invokes chromatic orb when held. Special, equipped, plus one to all saving throws, plus one to save versus spells, 5% resistance to magic. Usable only by good creatures. This shimmering jewel is actually the corpse of a radiant spirit from the upper plane of Elysium. When these creatures pass away, they leave their shimmering husks behind. These husks are often mistaken for jewels or semi-precious stones. Hmm. I don't recall anything about this. Uh, their essence is still that of harmony and goodness, and they can only be employed by a creature whose heart is filled with good intentions. The kaleidoscopic eye can either be wielded in the hand or placed in an empty eye socket, depending on whether its owner wishes to use it for defense or offense. When held, the user may summon the pa its power to harness ambient light, twist it, then turn it against his enemies. When placed in the owner's eye socket, the eye grafts itself to the wearer's skull and helps shield its new owner. It absorbs a portion of the energies from oncoming atta incoming attacks and provides proof against all manner of magical attacks. When the kaleidoscopic eyes... Offensive power is exhausted, it cracks, and turn to, turns to dust. So it has one use of Chromatic Orb. Well, I think that we want to go ahead and equip that. Here, you go ahead and hold on my eye, uh, Ignis. So we'll take that plus one to saving throws, plus one... Uh, so does that mean that there's a plus two to saving saves versus spells? I'm going to assume so. And 5% resistance to magic seems pretty good. Uh, I don't believe I have another Identify spell memorized right now. Nope. Alright, let's go ahead and level you up. Uh, that was enough experience points. Very, very nice. Spell memorization abilities have increased. Two hit points gained. Two hit points gained from Constitution. We'll take that. That seems good. And I have no 5th level spells for you right now. We will need to do something about that. Uh, okay, we have gotten all of our items. Alright, let's go ahead and leave. I think there's a way that we can get some more spells, um, but I'm not sure if I want to do that just yet. Let's actually head in here. Um, I think there's something we can do with the Modrons. Actually, right. you know what? Let's go rest first. Actually, before we do that, right. let's go talk to these people, see if we can uh, do something else that I was talking about. These are all mages in training. This person is carrying a sheaf of papers and unwound scrolls. They occasionally pause to look through them and read portions of what's written aloud, practicing elaborate hand motions as they do so. They look up as you come to stand before them. G greetings. Greetings. What is this place? This is where the aspiring mages can come to train and study. Many wizards took their first steps in the art as fledgling, fledgling sorcerers here. Where's the trainer? my journal. 
I do not know where Lady Thorncomb is gone. I would suggest you try the sensorium. She spends much of her time there. They lower their voice, frowning. Perhaps too much. All right, that's all I wish to know. I came across this stuff while I was checking to see what I needed to do to uh, advance the... Uh I was just looking at it. For some reason, I thought there was a second person standing behind him, but it's the floor decoration. Um, yeah, can you help me? Uh, can you show me to the sensoriums? Take me to the sensoriums. There. I'm gone. All right, I had a feeling that uh, this woman with a name around here somewhere... All right, let me just Done. move around myself. Totally just moonwalked again. Alright, where's the lady? Oh, lady! No one? Nope. Nope. Yeah, so I was working. While I was trying to figure out uh, what to do uh, about uh, advancing the actual storyline, because I, I had completely forgotten that there was uh, anything about a legacy, I, I think I went and talked to him and uh, assumed that the there we go, the uh, that Deanara's legacy was the only one available. This woman is still meandering about the sensorium, traveling from stone to stone. She looks over at you as you approach, but does not seem to recognize you. Are you by chance, Lady Thorncomb? Her eyes widen momentarily. She looks away from you. No, no, I am not, sir. But I think you are, madame. I was told the maid told you are the mage's tutor of the Civic Fest Hall. Lady Thorncomb puts on a sullen look. And if I was this woman, what of it? Well, I had hoped to receive training in the magical arts. Updated my journal. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, pardon me. I shall dash your hopes to pieces, then. I no longer wish to teach magic. Now go and leave me in peace. But why not? As if it were any concern of yours. But it is. I seek to learn, and you can teach. I would know what I might do to convince you to train me. She sighs loudly and resumes chewing on her thumbnail. I doubt there's much you can offer me that I cannot find on my own. The sensory stones provide me with all things that my considerable wealth cannot buy. The sensory stones? Mm, yes, each stone has recorded within it one experience or another. When I first came to these halls, I spent little time with them. Only now do I realize... What I had been missing. What had you been missing? My journal. She nods, smiling. Her eyes take on a glassy sheen, and she holds herself tightly. One could spend lifetimes here among the stones, experience after wondrous experience. Mere words cannot express their magnificence. I can only suggest you see for yourself, sir. You sound addicted. She snarls at you. Nonsense! I could stop any time I wish. I merely choose to bask in their wonder. Why waste time teaching dawdling, ungrateful magelings when I could remain here among the precious stones, living 100 new lives each day? I don't think the stones are here for that. Are there for that? Shouldn't you seek sensations of your own to share? Hmm. What you think matters little to me. Farewell. Alrighty. Well, we did hear about a guy who wants to be the the tutor. All right, Salabeth the Onyx. What did you mean by future mage tutor of the Festal? It's a prestigious presti uh, it's a prestigious position to be an official tutor in one of the Festal's training chambers. It's my intention to one day take the position of mage's tutor, but the title's currently in the possession of the Lady Thorncomb. If only I could find, if, I, if only I could somehow prove that I'd be a superior tutor. You'd always bring up the fact that she's addicted to sensory stones. She doesn't seem to want to teach anymore. Updated my journal. 
Celebesh's tight lips curl into a nasty smile. Is she now? And she no longer cares to teach. Excellent. He rubs his hands together eagerly. I'll request to be made the new mage's tutor shortly then. That's all I wish to know. Farewell. Now can you help me? Uh, can you show me to the sensoriums? Take me to the public sensoriums. Thank you very much. Alright. Alright, Lady Thorncomb. Lady Thorncomb squints at you as if trying to remember who you were. Suddenly she frowns pointedly. You, I hope you have not come to hear an ill-fated attempt to drag me back to the training chamber, because I most certainly shall not go. I just wondered if you knew that Salabesh was happy to hear of your decision and is requesting to be made the new mage's tutor. Salabesh, that portly little oaf! The man couldn't magic his way out of a mildewed sack. Now what is this decision you speak of? Why, your decision to remain in the sensoriums and no longer train less experienced mages. Updated my journal. What? But I... Yes, Lady Thornco? She glares at you. Asinine, holy asinine! Should you see Salabesh again... Tell him not to bother. I shall return to the training chambers at once. Perhaps I'll see you there, Lady Thorngum. Farewell. 12,000 experience points. Nice. Alright, come along, everyone. Let's see if we can go uh, dash Salabesh's uh, hopes. So, whatever became, whatever happened to you becoming Mage Tutor of the Festal? <clears throat> that vacuous, scatterbrained child of a woman, Thorncombe finally saw fit to leave the sensoriums and return to teaching, so my chance is lost. I do not wish to speak of it any longer, Salabesh continues to mumble foul curses beneath his breath. That's all I wish to know. Thank you. Done. Alrighty. There you are. What was that with that dogleg movement? Lady Thorncomb nods to you, but you're not you're not as clear as to whether she recognizes you or not. She's straightened her clothes and hair and looks quite the aging but attractive noble one. But still seems far away and easily distracted. Greetings, are you here to train in the magical arts? Yes I am. Very well. Answer me these questions, if you would. She proceeds to test her intelligence and reasoning ability with a long series of logic and word puzzles. Ask her training. Answer her questions as best you can. You answer the last of her questions, and she nods, pleased. You are a mage by trade, then, I take it? That I am. Are you ready to see what spells I can teach you, then? Yes, please show me. Alright, identify. Magic missile, friends, blindness, blood bridge, ice knife, luck. Blur, Ball Lightning, Elysium's Tears, Force Missiles, Cone of Cold, Chain Lightning, and Power Word Blind. It's level 8. Level 6. Level 5. Well, this will be a lot of money. Let's go ahead and buy it. Let's actually buy this one, too. Alright, so, uh, I will learn that one. I will learn that one. You can learn that one. Dang it! Not high enough level. go. Alright. Let's go get some rest.
on. Yeah, that'd be nice. Thank you very much. All rested up. All right. Well, actually, uh... Identify that. Stone Gullet of Lafal the Gross. Unique artifact. Special. Permanent plus one to saves versus poison. Plus 15% resistance to acid. The gurgling stone gullet of Lafal the Gross is not as well known as most artifacts tend to be. No wars have been waged over it. No betrayals, no epic journeys into the underworld. Only a few moralizing sorcerers, a fat man, and his stomach. As the legend goes, Lafal the Gross was said to have been promising a promising practitioner of the art, a sorcerer's apprentice at, in... Uh, to one of the last seers of Essanon. Despite his skill in, at the art, however, his gluttony was the subject of much ridicule among his peers. During the last great massing of Essanon, Lafal was invited to dine at the center table, but unknown to him, his peers had filled his wine goblet with an elixir of turning flesh to stone to teach the rotund student a lesson. Lafal consumed great, uh, such great amounts of food and drink during the mass, however, that it diluted the potion's effects. Complaining of a stomach ache hours after the feast, the local healers discovered that Lafal's stomach had turned into stone, yet was still capable of digesting food. Lafal lived the rest of his days happily eating, though his gullet was a few pounds heavier than before. When he finally died, his stomach was removed as an oddity, and since then it has wandered the plains in search of new stomachs. To use the artifact, one must consume it. It has the consistency of stale bread. So doing, uh, so doing will turn the eater's stomach into the stone gullet. Devouring the stone gullet of Lafal will grant the user the blessing of stone and rock and slight resistance to stomach acid. You know, or we could uh, forego these effects and uh, install it in Artifurnace and never have to worry about uh, the ship's power again on our Spelljammer. Okay. So, I am now 15%. Why am I only 5%? Oh, up. Uh, 5% resistant to magic, right. 11% uh, to magic fire, 15% to acid, and 11% to fire. Now, I was looking around, and I could not find the uh, item that I need to break off that chip from the uh, the statue that uh, was in the midst of its curse. So, I think I'm just going to go take care of that right now. We'll not worry about it. It's a, a breakable weapon, so it seems not all that useful, to be honest. I'm gone. Apply the Gorgon Sav to the statue. Greetings! Before you can do a thing, a blazing torrent of words flies from the sorcerer's lips. As he speaks, you feel an agonizing sensation like a sudden wave of raging heat pour over you and settle into your skin like a blistering wound. Blindness strikes you as your eyes burst, running from their sockets like shattered eggs. You hear someone screaming and realize it is you. Wait for the horror to end. 4,000 experience points. The last thing you he things you hear, even over your own cries, is Mort shouting. New taunts, all right. By the lady's bladed teats, what a... Everything suddenly falls silent as the last of your senses flicker and fade away to nothing. Die horribly, a victim of Gang Roigidon's awful curse. Ah, oh, great. I hope he doesn't lose his memories this time. Uh, worse than last time. Done. I think we might be able to do something. They say we get rid of Ignis, all right? I mean, he's burning his candle at both ends, if you know what I mean. Eh, it might happen. It might happen. Don't worry. Wait, you can actually rest with him? Uh, 
Alright, is there anything that I want to sell? I could sell these, actually. You know what? Let's do just that. I don't need that. Uh, I think I could sell the Codex of the Inconceivable as well. buy something. Let's start by selling these. I guess I don't need the Tome of Bone, Bone and Ash anymore, either. Can't sell the cheese. Alright, um, what do you actually have for sale? Anything that I want doesn't really look like it. That handbill is printed. Apparently I never came back and finished this quest. I, I, it should have showed up as a quest, I feel. It's printed terrific! I knew you were the man for the job. Here, take this message to Keldor of Durian at the Foundry. I'm sure he'll be glad to receive it, and you'll be glad for the hundred coins you get in return. All right, and if you have Updated questions, my journal. All right, that's good enough. All right, I still want to go back to. Uh, the clerk's ward. How much money do I have right now? Not enough. Alright. Done. Alright, so apparently with the Modron we can talk to these guys. Uh... I had some questions. Do you know what this little cube-like toy creature is? The Modron, its appearance identical in every aspect but size to the object in your hands, uh, blinks once, twice, and speaks. The object is a portal cube. The user is to position the appendages of the portal cube in such a manner that it will activate. Once activated, the portal cube will transport the user to whatever destination it was tuned to during its creation. What's the proper position to activate this one? We do not have that information. Over 97% of all portal cubes function in a slightly different manner. We were not present at the construction of the subject's portal cube, nor have we ever been given instructions as to its use. Should the subject desire to utilize the portal cube, they will have to determine its method of operation and destination via experimentation. Alright, farewell then. All right, let's use it. Uh, manipulate the, the toy and look for some sort of effect. Move the arms and make sword fighting noises. Yeah. The toy clicks and whirs as you move its clockwork joints. With it, within moments, the tiny cube has vanished, vanquished every imaginary opponent. You have set it again, set against it, and settled back to its normal position. Wave its arms and make cheering noises. Hordes of imaginary creatures from all across the, from across the plains cheer the cube's victory. You can almost see a tiny oily tear brimming in one of its eyes. It is a hero, the greatest cube ever to roam the plains, and everyone loves it. In your mind, fall from grace and Anna, hug it and shower it with kisses. <laughs> That's awesome. <sighs> Put the cube away for future battles against the multiverse. Manipulate the toy, look for some sort of effect. 
You bend, twist, and rotate the toy's various joint points of articulation, noting that the limbs often suddenly revert to their original position. Finally, as you bend its left knee, the toy makes a nod pop and shudders in your hands. Uh, rotate the left arm. Alright, so what was that? Uh, left knee. Okay, and the left arm does nothing. So, left knee. Left knee, left wing. Left knee, left wing, right wing? Okay, so, uh, left knee, uh, left wing, right wing. Hold on. Writing it down so that I don't get confused. Uh, left arm. Left knee, left wing, right wing, right arm. There is a whir, a click, then a blinding white light suddenly explodes in your hands. Whoa! Well. We have been teleported someplace else. I guess we'll have to find out what this place has in store for us in the next episode. See you then, everyone.